Venom is an immensely popular superhero whom we've been eagerly awaiting to see more of on the big screen. We'll let you know what went on behind the scenes of Venom, so you'll definitely want to watch this before grabbing your movie ticket. Before we begin, subscribe to CBR and ring that bell to become a member of our notification squad so you'll never miss a video. Without further ado, here are some things Marvel doesn't want you to know about the Venom movie. Guys, you do not want to do this, trust me. The MCU. The Marvel Cinematic Universe used to be a fun place for us to see all of our favorite heroes and villains, but after the events of Avengers Infinity War, it became a decidedly less safe place as Ant-Man learned all too recently. So while this Venom fact might seem strange, it's not surprising considering all that's going on. Despite being majorly linked with Marvel hero Spider-Man and even being an Avenger at one point in the comics, Venom doesn't take place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Which companies have the rights to which Marvel characters can be pretty confusing even for major movie fans. Venom is a Sony film based on Spider-Man characters, but it doesn't take place in the same world as Spider-Man Homecoming. There was a deal between Sony and Disney which allowed actor Tom Holland's Spider-Man to appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Many fans suspected that this would be the case even if we really hoped it wouldn't be. Sadly, our hopes have now been officially dashed, and we know that for sure that Venom is not part of the MCU. However, this is just the first movie in what will likely be an entire franchise of Spider-Man spin-offs. So it remains to be seen if Venom will ever cross into the same universe as Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Whoa, you're the Avengers! What are you guys doing here? Spider-Man. We all know that Spider-Man and Venom go together like peanut butter and jelly, but sadly, Sony and Disney don't seem to feel the same way. We know that Venom won't be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but that doesn't mean that there can never be any crossover elements. In fact, the whole reason Venom has similar powers to Spider-Man is because the alien symbiote encountered him. The Spider-Man franchise has been rebooted repeatedly, and its current iteration features the acting talent of Tom Holland. It turns out this actor has some strong opinions on keeping Venom away from Spidey, and he isn't a fan. At a Comic Con in Seattle, Washington, Holland was asked which villain he would like to face off against the most in a movie. He replied that he would like to see Spider-Man going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Venom. People have been speculating that Holland might make a surprise cameo in the new Venom movie, and this seemed to add fuel to the fire. Although it's unlikely we will see Venom crossing over into the MCU, we might just get a cameo from Spider-Man during Venom. We can do we want. Lethal Protector Without having Spider-Man to play off of, many fans are wondering what direction the new Venom movie will take. According to director Ruben Fleischer, the film will lean heavily on two different arcs from the comic books. These are the Venom Lethal Protector miniseries and the Planet of the Symbiotes. In Venom Lethal Protector, we got to see the origin of Eddie Brock and learn that he was once a star athlete and student who struggled with his disapproving father. He majored in journalism and got a promising start as a journalist for the Daily Globe. Brock was tasked with covering supervillain serial killer Sin Eater, which which seems like a pretty extreme task for a new journalist. Eager to make a name for himself, Brock published a scathing expose on the identity of Sin Eater. Brock was totally duped and utterly humiliated when Spider-Man captured the true criminal. Needless to say, this completely destroyed Brock's career and left him with a seething hatred of Spider-Man. Based on what we've seen in the trailers, the movie seems to follow this pretty closely. We learn that Brock is a journalist who is dealing with some serious pent-up rage issues. We may not see Spider-Man, but now we have some idea about Eddie Brock's movie backstory. We found something. We call them symbiotes. Planet of the Symbiotes. In the series Planet of the Symbiotes, we see Eddie Brock wrestling with a pretty understandable identity crisis. We know that he gains his powers from an alien symbiote, but is this alien the true Venom? And if so, who does that make Brock? This was the question Brock was wrestling over when Spider-Man suggested that he bid farewell to the symbiote in order to clear his head for a while. While Brock may have gotten some good thinking in during this time, the symbiote didn't take too well to the rejection and began drawing other symbiotes to Earth in order to wreak havoc. Brock succeeded in freeing himself from the alien menace only to see more aliens possessing people and committing various atrocities. Planet of the Symbiotes discusses the alien origin of the symbiote when it isn't showing an all-out invasion of planet Earth. It's easy to wonder which elements of this series we'll see in the Venom movie. It's possible we could watch Venom deal with the entire planet being overrun by these creatures, but there's also a character we are introduced to in the series that many fans are eager to see on the big screen. Could this source material secretly reveal the fact that we are going to see Venom come face to face with the villain Carnage? Carnage. 
in Planet of the Symbiotes, we see a symbiote release a character called Cletus Cassidy from prison. Cassidy is a serial killer who then becomes bonded with an alien symbiote, creating the supervillain Carnage. He made a powerful villain to fight against Venom, Spider-Man, and the Scarlet Spider. As hype for Venom grew, many people wondered if his old friend Carnage would be making an appearance. It would make sense considering he's a popular villain and an even darker version of Venom himself. This rumor was that the part of Carnage would be played by actor Woody Harrelson, who was named as appearing in the film portraying an unknown character. Since we know that Planet of the Symbiotes is some of the source material being used, this fan theory doesn't seem too far-fetched, but Carnage is far from the only symbiote-based supervillain in the comics. When fans believed that they had spotted Carnage in the trailer, they were actually seeing a character named Riot played by actor Riz Ahmad. Just because we haven't seen Carnage in the trailer doesn't mean that he won't appear in the movie, though. We'll have to wait and see if this persistent rumor will come true or not when we finally see Venom in the theaters. But man and symbiote combined. Symbiotes. After seeing the first trailer for Venom, fans had a ton of questions and concerns. We didn't get to see any shots of Tom Hardy's Venom in action, and this intensified worries about the film's plot. After all, other than Spider-Man, who could Venom be fighting against in the movie? Well, thankfully, we've now seen some updated footage showing that Eddie Brock is investigating a group called the Life Foundation. It seems this group has something to do with the symbiotes, and we'll be seeing a lot more of them in the movie. During Venom Lethal Protector, we saw Brock's symbiote being harvested in order to produce five beings called Scream, Agony, Phage, Lasher, and Riot. The latest trailer features test subjects which have been bonded to symbiotes, and there's a good chance that at least some of them will be based on the characters from the comics. If we're getting a half dozen new symbiote characters, this would definitely answer the question of who Venom is going to face off against in the movie. Even if Carnage doesn't end up being one of them, we'll definitely get to see some battles between other alien beings. It's possible the movie will follow Venom Lethal Protector even more closely than most people believe. Eat both your arms and then both of your legs, and then we will eat your face right off your head. R rated. It's no secret that major Hollywood studios aren't making superhero movies out of the goodness of their hearts. They're hoping for huge returns on their investments and, for a long time, a film's rating was considered instrumental to its success. After all, making a movie rated PG-13 as opposed to rated R meant that theoretically more people would be able to see it. For this reason, many studios will try to get their movie a PG-13 rating in hopes of it being a huge commercial success. Switching from PG-13 to R is a big risk, especially when a franchise is already underway. You could risk alienating a huge section of your fan base by making a movie too risque for many of them to see, but recently we've seen some franchises start out with an R rating right out the gate and be successful. Think about movies like Deadpool and Logan, and it's not hard to see that even movies with an R rating can be successful. Venom is being billed as a dark, gritty movie featuring a fan favorite anti-hero, so it seems to be the perfect candidate for an R rating. Thankfully, director Ruben Fleischer has confirmed that it would be impossible to do Venom justice if limited by a PG-13 rating. He wants to honor the comics, and that means showing off just how violent and vile Venom can be. We are Venom. Fan service. Many comic book superhero fans feel as if they could make the perfect superhero movie. It not only takes a huge amount of source material knowledge, but an in-depth appreciation for the character. Surprisingly, this is something which has been a struggle for many comic book movies. Spider-Man 3 was widely considered to be a pretty bad movie, and that's not just the opinion of the fine folk here at CBR, even the director Sam Raimi admitted the movie was a total disaster. Raimi has made some incredible films over the years, so how did this one go so wrong? According to Raimi, he just wasn't a fan of any of the characters, including Venom. When you're not passionate about the story you're telling, there's only so much potential for a good movie. Raimi disliked Venom so much he didn't want to include him in the movie at all, but he was forced to by Sony. Shoehorning a character he didn't like into the movie had a pretty predictable result, but there's no need to let one director who's not a fan spoil the potential for a franchise. Venom director Ruben Fleischer is a huge fan of Venom and is looking forward to bringing him to the big screen. Actor Tom Hardy is also a huge Venom fan and says that his son is as well, even though he's a bit too young to watch the movie when it's released. I always seem to find myself questioning something the government may not be looking at. The New Universe Superhero fans are just hoping to be able to see a quality Venom movie this fall, but for Sony the stakes are definitely a lot higher because Venom doesn't take place in the MCU. This means that it's essentially starting its own cinematic universe. We know that Sony has more movies in the works, and it's possible that Venom will be setting the stage for them. This puts a ton of pressure on the movie to be as great as possible and establish a universe that's hospitable for other franchises. Recently, we've heard that Jared Leto will be starring as the Marvel Comics character Morbius the Living Vampire. Although the character has been around since 1970, 
1971, he's never been considered an A-list star, though hopefully this movie will change that. Then there's the movie Silver and Black, which is meant to feature Silver Sable and the Black Cat teaming up. While the release date has been pushed back, we're still really looking forward to learning more about this movie. There's also a rumor about an upcoming movie based on the Marvel character Nightwatch. This means that Venom has a lot of work to do when it comes to setting the scene for even more Sony superhero movies. While we may be sad because this universe lacks Spider-Man, Sony may make up for it with new and exciting characters. Rolling down the street like a bird in the wind. And there you have it. What are your predictions for the new Venom movie? Are you worried about the lack of Spider-Man or are you excited about the potential for new characters? Let us know in the comment section below and subscribe to CBR for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.